you had Dylan Johnston in the wind tunnel and we're all very curious as to exactly what happened, what the gains were, what the testing protocols were. And I think importantly for a lot of listeners, where's the easy gains that they can apply into their own racing or possibly training if you're looking to half wheel and smash one of your training partners. Maybe to start out when Dylan came into the wind tunnel, did you have a testing protocol in mind? Yeah, so for for Dylan, he's been to wind tunnels, not with us, but separately um, quite a few times before. So he, he does know what he's doing there. I think he was quite impressed with Silverstone, just sort of the extra features that it has that none of the tunnels he's been in before did have. Um, things like uh, cameras on the side, top and front, and then they will project your images in front of you. So you can see exactly the position that you're holding and compare that to a previous one. Seems pretty um, common sense to have something like that so that you can make sure you're keeping a constant position, but none of the tunnels in the US had that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very good tunnel uh, to go to and use, and it allows us to, to get really accurate, precise data. So for, for Dylan, when we took him, the main thing we were looking at was validation of some of the work we'd done before, and then a few different optimizations for him for the 2025 season. So main thing we were excited to show him was the the different fabrics that we'd been working on uh, where we could upgrade his suit and then really helping him with some other things like helmet choice as well um yeah just to make him an all-round fast athlete kit is one part but yeah we're we're here to help him with everything when i'm getting packed for a bike race when i'm packing my bag i always think about in my head okay i'm getting dressed i'm getting dressed from the ground up so let me think about that in terms of the wind tunnel testing. So if we're getting dressed from the ground up, first thing Dylan's likely putting on is socks. I know you have the new one sock. Did you test all socks versus new socks? If so, what were the results? Yeah, we tested with him old versus new. We also tested our Neo socks, which is a dual layer sock like our skin suits. Um, that one didn't actually work on him, which wasn't really a surprise because it's aimed at sort of 50 K an hour plus as a speed range, um, More of a track. The, yeah. Uh, so different way it works, um, different demands for 50 K an hour versus 35. So wasn't really a surprise, but we figured we'd give it a go too. Uh, we tested him with the new one socks, our older version of socks and our aero ish socks. Um, which are more of a training sock with a bit of added flair. They'll save you a little bit, but um, they actually do still perform quite well at low speeds just because it's a, a different way it works um, versus what you need at mid and high speed. But yeah, it was a, a good gain on Dylan. So his his race speed of 35k an hour, I think we had about a three watt performance gain versus our previous generation of aero socks. That's um, amazing. Yeah. And did you test that at various speed ranges? So say 25k an hour, 30k an hour, 35, 40k an hour? Yeah, so for Dylan, we weren't really interested in anything above 35k an hour. So we did 25 through 35. 35 being pretty spot on for what the the front of the pack will be at for Unbound. Um, so it's a really good option to optimize him around. And as you say, you tested your newer 50k an hour track socks what are they called uh neo so neo needed the the previous uh season the aero base layer that we had needs to be worn with a, a smooth skin suit so we called that one the neo suit being it's our new suit um so as it was a standalone product it was called that we then expanded it into a range of products so we had a road version a tri version and then the socks and overshoes as well got that sort of dual layer upgrade. So it went into calling the whole thing Neo, which then matrix wise also helps name the single layer suits uh, and socks. We call them the one. Uh, so yeah, it's. I'm looking it's forward good... to the full Morpheus launch in four years oh, from yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, terms of the, in terms of the fabrics, what's the difference? How do the different fabric choices from your old sock to the new one to the Neo sock, 
how do they influence speed airflow like what's the considerations when you're thinking of these new fabrics on what new fabrics to test yeah so the the biggest difference we made between these two is we swapped from a, a knitted fabric that we'd used previously we're now using woven fabrics um, it gives you much more precision in terms of the construction of the fabric we won't go into it too nerdily because i don't think anybody will care particularly that much but the <laughs> Uh, the fibers you can use are much finer. You can pack them much closer together so you can get much better performance out of them. Um, for the, the textured fabrics that you're seeing on the one socks as well, the, the way they work is kind of inverted too. So older generations, the ribbing was actually a, a thinner part of the fabric. So you had the small lines would be actually a step down in the fabric. The newer fabric that area of the thin rib is actually thicker so it steps up um s small won't really mean anything to people but it's a different way that it then works to turbulate the airflow um and we found a, a good gain from doing that and when you go to the dual layer you're saying that works at speeds over 50k an hour why is that why is that not working at lower speeds <sighs> it's it's a tricky one on the legs because it works on arms of suits higher than that so it's it's a bit of a weird one that we don't have a good answer to on the socks as to why it doesn't work at a lower speed on the the suits the way it performs is kind of like a smart material um so you've got fabric draped over a structure underneath um then in areas of high pressure like the front of the arm that top layer of fabric is pushed down more into the under structure so you get more texture in those areas effectively. And then in areas of low pressure where you don't want any structure, that fabric is pulled away from the ribbing underneath slightly. So it ends up being smoother overall. So with changes in yaw and things like that, you actually get to control effectively where texture is on the arm. So yeah, it's, it's quite a clever way of doing things. A quick word from today's sponsor. A few years ago, I came out of my local coffee shop after a long winter spin to find my cafe lock on the ground, sliced clean in half. My pride and joy bike, it was gone. Just like that, a small fortune in kit and frankly, part of my identity as a cyclist, it disappeared in seconds. If you've ever had that sick feeling in the pit of your stomach, even imagining your bike getting stolen, wrecked or damaged mid-travel, you know it's not just a possession. It's your freedom. It's your fitness. It's your sanity on tough weeks. That's where Bicmo comes in. Whether it's theft, damage, crashes, racing or travel, Bicmo's got your back. Their in-house claims team makes the process fast and painless. And here's the kicker. With 50% off multi-bike cover, you can protect all your bikes and even your family or your mate's bike under the same policy. No nonsense, no surprises. But Bicmo isn't just about covering bikes. They actually care about the future of cycling itself. And that's why I've partnered with them. If you insure your bike with Bicmo today, they'll donate £10 toward trash-free trails to help clean up and protect our shared cycling spaces. So head on over to Bicmo, B-I-K-M-O dot com and use the code ROADMAN to get covered, save money and support our wild spaces. All that information is in the description below. 